broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good afternoon, everybody. We'll be starting the webcast in about two minutes. So just hang out, say hello to everybody, and we'll get going in just a few minutes. Kobe, why don't you go into the chat window and say hello to everybody? I shall. Fantastic. Seeing some names that I absolutely recognize. It's great to welcome back friends. I hope some of you joining or also had a chance to participate in our first webinar on the customer journey. So everybody come on in, make yourself comfortable. We'll be starting in about one minute. So I see Reed and Tracy and Vicki, excellent. Thank you for joining us. Noel, Nathan, welcome. Glad to have you guys here today. I see Joe and Jen, welcome. Colleen, glad to have you guys here today. Kobe, are you ready to go? I am. Okay, well, we'll get started in just a minute then. Just wait for a few more people to come in. All right, Kobe, let's go. Well, first of all, welcome everybody to today's webinar entitled Quantifying the Customer Journey. Your leaders today will be myself, Debbie Guy Geesh. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at the Pedowitz Group, and Kobe Ritten, who is Chief Strategist at the Pedowitz Group. So welcome everybody. Um, you know, when we put together this webinar around quantifying the customer journey, we thought we really need some folks who have done this a lot. So Kobe and I were talking as we were putting this webinar together, and we figured out that between the two of us, we have over 20 years of experience in mapping the customer journey for small, medium, enterprise, and also global organizations. So we hope that the content that we share with you today will be something that will be useful and that also will be applicable. So let's take a look at today's agenda. We are going to begin by talking about how the customer experience pays and how do you make that transition from, okay, we know it pays to actually getting over to the other side of actually quantifying the value of that journey. We'll do that by taking a look at first how you need to shift your marketing universe. And then we'll take a look at three operational shifts that you need to make mindset, the tactical, and the MarTech. And then of course, Kobe and I will end with presenting with you guys, sorry, presenting you guys with a brand new scorecard and also talk about next steps. So with that, let's first do our very first poll question. So Maj, do you wanna bring up the poll? We're always interested when we have these webinars and finding out more about you. So the question today is, do you have customer journey maps that are operationalized? and institutionalized across all customer facing functions in your company. Everybody take a minute, answer the poll. Um, you might say, yes, boy, we've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Some of you might say no. I hope most of you are at least working on it. And I hope nobody checks the last one, which is what in the heck are you talking about, Debbie? So let's take a look at our poll progress that we have. We've got about, um, I'm just watching the numbers as they come in. We'll give it another 10 seconds. We've got 13% uh, at yes, 52% at no. Very, very happy to see that at least a third of you are working on it, even as we speak. That is excellent. You've got four more seconds to get your answers in. Okay, Majda, show us the poll results, please. Okay, this is interesting. First of all, congratulations to the 12% who said yes, 
been there, done that, got the t-shirt. You really are in a very elite category. 54% are no. Well, I hope you're on the webinar so you can learn more about how to do that. We have a good third of you who are working on it. And I know somebody had to be funny and say, what well, Debbie are you talking about? And really it is kind of a, a strange question, but at the end of the day, what Kobe and I are gonna be talking about is you know, by what you measure, you know, this will determine how you set up those customer journey maps, how you operationalize them, and also how you institutionalize those. So I want to go to what I call the problem. And in the problem, really, I want to talk about, first of all, the fact that we all know that customer experience pays. It's a very exciting business opportunity in a recent study by eConsultancy. They said that 22% of marketers in their survey said, Customer experience is the most exciting business opportunity in front of us. More exciting than content marketing, more exciting than mobile, more exciting than personalization, more exciting than social. And there was a whole bunch of other small things down there. Yet as a marketer, we, we read these stats and then we read these kinds of statistics that are over on the right that talks about what's the benefit of improving CX and who wouldn't want to improve customer retention by 42%. Who wouldn't want to improve customer satisfaction by 33% and who wouldn't want to help increase cross-selling and upselling? Yet, how do you go from, wow, this looks great, to actually doing it and quantifying that journey? Well, the place you absolutely have to begin is you have to shift your philosophy. And what I mean by that is current funnel centric view that many of you live and breathe by while groundbreaking at one time it is now holding you back and again I've been in this game a long time I bought my first marketing automation system in 2004 I've been in sales and marketing forever so again at one time the funnel certainly was the center of our universe well if this is what's holding you back then what can actually help you move forward we believe that in the customer engagement economy, and that's defined as the world in which we live in which our customers are in control of their journey, not us, you need to shift the center of your marketing universe to a customer-centric view. So rather than representing things as a funnel where it's kind of lopsided, you only have one part of it, at the Betawitz Group, we introduced this thing called TPG1, which is taking a holistic view of the customer journey. When this becomes the center of the marketing universe, what you measure changes and what you do changes. So this is the philosophical shift that you all need to address. With that new view or that shift also comes new metrics. So the question then becomes, if you're moving from funnel-centric to customer-centric, how will you quantify this shift? And so, Kobe, what's the answer? You make it sound like it's, it's a simple thing. <laughs> Just by saying, what's the answer? Well, there are a number of pieces to uh, being able to quantify this shift in thinking. And so what we would, if, if you would, Deb, uh, Deb move forward, uh, there are three parts to operationalizing this shift. We look at this as uh, a mindset shift, as we mentioned, tactical, and a MarTech shift. I'll deal first with the mindset shift. Mindset shift. This is often the greatest challenge in many organizations as it's completely dependent on a C-level shift in business strategy. From a hyper-focus on acquisition of net new customers to a holistic view that includes not only acquisition, but retention of existing customers. Most of our clients spend a disproportionate amount of time and marketing resources, effort, budget on acquisition-oriented activities. Disproportionate in that it doesn't adequately reflect the, the buyer or who is buying from your organization. In many cases, 80% of revenue comes off of existing customers, but in some cases, all of the budget is spent on acquisition efforts, up to and including things like product slicks that are used in the final stages of the purchasing process. Very few of our of the organizations that I've worked with have spent a considerable amount of time on onboarding programs or content development that is specific to customer or focused on customer value realization and further into their life cycle, even on technology. Once so this, 
Go ahead, so, Deb. So that's the first area, mindset shift. And what's the tactical shift? The tactical shift is often next in line. Investments in acquisition oriented tactics are shrinking as customer experience emerges as the new buzzword, as Deb just alluded to. In program planning this year with one of my, my global communications clients, we spent a considerable amount of time planning programs for base management as they recognize that a slow but consistent churn or customer attrition is impacting their profitability. It's consistent with what research tells us that we already know. It's far more expensive to acquire a new customer than it is to retain, retain existing ones. And that means a trickle down affecting tactics from program, program objectives all the way to specific campaigns designed for base management renewals or product updates, content created that speaks in the tone of familiarity versus who we are and sort of, you know, impersonal, and messages that are fundamentally different, including web content messaging. So the customer experience, uh, the tactics are, are changing to evolve with the customer experience. And the third part is around the mark tech shift. And even technologies that you utilize can shift as a result of a strategy. Technologies that help you manage and integrate customer data and insights are becoming increasingly more popular as the customer experience gains traction in, in business strategy. Again, that C-level business strategy. Any tech that can provide uh, business or that the business perceives that you can, can help improve or personalize the customer experience digitally or manually are being considered. If you're familiar with Scott Brinker's uh, marketing tech landscape, you know that that this space has grown massively over the last three years. And you'll notice that the number of customer experience management or CEMs and enterprise feedback management EFMs on the graphic is rapidly increasing. Well, let's take so a look at each of these in more detail, Kobe. Yep. So this occurs again in three stages. And first, the, the first part of it is that mind, mindset shift that has to occur across the company um, and, and it has to be led by someone. And so, it's important to note that an executive mandate has to occur from the top down and push this strategy into the organization. The company has to adopt it and marketing has to operationalize it. If you don't have that executive support, you're dead in the water. Efforts are going to be, they're not going to be sticky in the organization. They're not going to stay long term. They may be sort of one of those things that people say, we tried that and it didn't work or, you know, it didn't, it wasn't around very long or it worked in this group and not that. But you know, should marketing proceed with a strategy without that executive support that drives it across other functions, it'll become a disjointed experience for the customer over their life cycle, which is obviously not what we're trying to do. And you know, Kobe, I also see the word executives have to lead. And I think that's important too, because you can't have an executive team just mandate there's going to be a transition to customer intimacy. They have to lead the way by all of the actions that they take and actually how they run the company. Absolutely, Debbie. The entire organization has to shift towards a customer-centric approach for this to be successful. In many organizations, it's becoming marketing's role to put together and pull together the pieces of turning the customer experience strategy that is top-down driven into action and pulling together sales, IT, customer service, and marketing under one vision of customer first. So, you know, this slide really talks to how the mindset shift begins from the top down. Executives have to lead, the company has to adopt, and then there have to be measures for everybody along the way. But let's talk about what is the shift in mindset from the marketing department. Right. There are two things that marketing needs to do in order to make this shift. First, we need to de define and institutionalize the customer journey and measure desired outcomes. We begin this process by documenting the customer lifecycle. Cross-functional collaboration is absolutely necessary to create a balanced and accurate depiction of the customer's journey. Not the buying journey, but the, or the, the seller's journey, but the buying journey. Several of my clients have assigned a team to spearhead the transition and keep the organization on track while they institutionalize a customer-centric strategy. Ordinarily, many of, for those that know me, know that I, and have heard me say, that I am an absolute advocate for the notion of joint accountability is no accountability. However, in the case of significant or organizational shifting such as this, a cross-functional team that allows voices to be heard across different functions and drive strategy to execution is really, really important for buy-in. And we don't want all formal leaders. We want opinion leaders to be part of that collaboration because it's those people who will then influence others in their departments to buy into the shifting strategy and therefore institutionalizing it in the organization. 
Creating those standard operating procedures is a really great way to embed expectations of the organization into day-to-day -day activity. These should be consistent in that they're customer-centric across all the functions, marketing, sales, IT, service, finance, support, really any function in the organization that could interface with the customer at any time. And then, and Colby, what I like about the SOPs is it also becomes a very uh, concrete way to measure that shift in the mindset. And that's one of the reasons that we've added it to the scorecard. Absolutely. So tell uh, us a little bit more about the scorecard for this, because I think a lot of times when people think about quantifying the customer journey, they think about all the stuff they have to do, like get engagement numbers up and launch more campaigns or, you know, engage customers more. But this is really talking about this first step is you've got to measure the shift in the mindset. So what kinds of things are on the scorecard? Yeah, so one of the easy things to measure is adherence to this SOPs or standard operating procedures. So we want to measure the adoption rate, and, and we can do that by adherence, uh, measuring adherence. And then another is to measure or you know ensure that there's training and then certification. So the number of certifications of people in-house, your employees, your peers that are getting certified and understanding the strategy for the customer experience and understanding what it means to be a customer-centric organization. Love then, that. That's awesome. Uh, and then customer-centric MBOs, absolutely critical. I mean, any, any behavior that an organization wants to change, the easiest and fastest way to do it, it's the low-hanging fruit, is to put it into your employees' MBOs. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a quick look, a very quick look at a very big job, shifting the mindset of the entire organization, and then specifically within marketing, and then thinking about how we would quantify that shift via the scorecard. Um, let's talk about the tactical shift that yeah. occurs within marketing. Yeah. So nailing the tactical shift, this is, this is where the rubber meets the road, right? This is the, the really um, detailed part where people kind of get confused about what exactly do we mean by making a tactical shift uh, in the strategy. And, and really what that means is we have to adopt some new tactics. We are going to have to make some adjustments to things that we already do. And then we're going to have to add some new measurements so that we're sure that what we're measuring or that what we're doing is driving customer-centric behavior within our marketing function. So I'll start with adopting new tactics. Tactics, As I mentioned earlier, marketing really is evolving as a, as a business function to a function that, that is owning the customer experience or customer journey. And so we need to start with that reframing of our thinking and marketing of, we have to really understand that we own that piece. And as marketers, we then need to, all right, what do we do next? We want to take a deep dive into our customer and who they are and how do they buy and how do they, what, what purchase of, of product A is indicative of, of a probability of purchasing product B. And that's and the customer. Kobe, I would say that's a huge challenge for most B2B marketers because my, what I've seen in B2B marketing is they really have very, very little knowledge of their customers. Yes. And so I think, you know, conducting that first in-depth customer analysis based on the entire customer journey is a way for marketers to truly begin to understand who their customers are and also to set up an ongoing dialogue with them beyond reviewing digital body language. Absolutely. No question. And it's usually so eye-opening in the organization. Another critical piece of that, though, is to make sure that once that analysis is done, that we share what we learn with sales, with executives, with customer service, because there are nuggets of information that are gonna be really surprising once you go through the process of doing it in in-depth analysis. It's so insightful. I always like to say that uh, customer journey mapping is a team sport, and um, so, so are the tactics, because the tactics occur across every customer facing part of the organization. So I, I see you also have other new tactics might be marketing might have to do a voice of the customer group or marketing might have to, you know, run a customer advisory board, but obviously brand new tactics, things marketing has never done before is now being put on their plate. What Absolutely. about adjusting current tactics? Yeah, these are the things that we're already doing and, and people have a hard time shifting. And usually that's that's more than just a strategy shift. It's people who write content. So writing new content by stage. And if you remember the loop that we showed you earlier, it's it's by stage on the right side. The left side is focused on acquisition, but the right side is focused on expansion of existing customers. And so 
adjusting content that again speaks to a customer that's in adoption or onboarding or value realization or customer loyalty creating content to then support campaigns that are designed for welcome to our organization we're happy to have you as a customer kind of onboarding and then renewal your contract's up in six months now's a good time to start communicating with those people so those types of campaigns with content that supports that are, are just adjustments to tactics tactics that you probably are already doing and then events a lot of times you know most organizations that we work with do some form of events of events whether they're digital or in uh, in person virtual or in person and you know hosting events that are for loyal customers or uh, customer specific conferences conferences that are just for your top tier customers those kinds of events are gaining popularity just to to show some sort of appreciation for the customers right. that have been customers for a long time and then clearly based on adopting new tactics and adjusting current tactics you would add new things to your scorecard and a couple of examples might be to establish and optimize a set of predictive customer metrics your voice of customer metrics or the loyalty and advocacy metrics and again this list can go on we're just trying to give you guys some placeholders so you can think about what do you need to add to your scorecard as you're working to quantify the customer journey let's move to the last shift that has to happen and that's the martech shift tell us about that colby yeah so the martech shift is is an inevitable conclusion here and in some cases it's leading uh leading people to make a change uh, because they are they're you know fascinated by what these texts can do and so they invest in the technologies and kind of stand there and go wait what's this supposed to do so uh, what we encourage people to do as they look at their martech stack is to consider really evaluate what the business strategy is and what you're trying to accomplish and then look at what technologies will best suit that requirement but as i mentioned earlier if you're if you're familiar with the marketing tech landscape that brinker does it's it's the number of of um, cems and efms is just exploding and that space has gotten so big over the last couple of years but you need to have a standing oper a standard operating procedure in how you evaluate the need for a new technology as well as the vendor it needs to be consistent across the organization right and and again what's important about that if you took a piece of paper and you just cut off the right side of this graphic you know martech in a funnel centric world is everything that you see on the left but martech in a world that is run by our customers you have to take a look at technology across the entire customer life cycle you have to work with other parts of the organization to decide what to buy how to use how to share data so the whole idea of martech shifts into this extended ecosystem once you take that customer centric view a really great example that we had was um you know martech does the stackies every year and colby and i we love to look at these stackies they're very very innovative if you haven't seen them go online and take a look at them just go take a look at martech stackies and this is one that's done by alacadia and the reason we thought this one might be nice to see is number one alacadia also does a loop for the customer journey they've got a different way to look at it um, but it is a complete life cycle loop and then they have the actual technologies that they use at every single stage of the customer journey so again think about your martech stack today think about it's it's a lot of it's probably very funnel metrics based but when you take a look at this holistic view it becomes something very very different and then Kobe, tell us about this new scorecard. We've, we've added elements, we've talked about new things to measure, not exhaustively, but in a way that you can begin to think about and consider what works for your business environment. So tell us about the new scorecard. This is, this is now just a lit, uh, an idea starter. I mean, this is a list of possible things that you could measure, um, but we need to, you know, think about in addition to these, the mind shift metrics and the MarTech shift metrics that we mentioned in previous slides, but there are a lot more things to measure, obviously. There are new things to measure. Um, and you know, we wanna think about what we could measure with other functions in the organization. What are things that, that multi-functions are interested in? And then look at how they all work together. So on this slide, really, we, we went around the, the loop so that you could see the different types of things that you might measure on the right-hand side. I think the things on the left-hand side are things that, that most of us have measured or are, are familiar with, with measuring, but things like, 
in loyalty repurchase rate or repurchase point and then uh, purchasing relationships in the organization um, or with your products those are those are important metrics to be able to be predictive about what somebody might buy or when and things in value realization a, a customer tends to stay in value realization longer than in other stages and it, once they've become a customer and so that's a good time to be reminding them that you're an industry leader and that you're you're um, sending them content that helps enrich their their knowledge base of what they do. And um, that's a good time to look at the, the that content engagement and the type of content, new content that's about helping them learn and, and get better at what they do, utilizing the, the solutions that you provide to them. You know, Kobe, we have really flung a lot of information out <laughs> to everyone on the webinar. Um, how would you sum next steps? This is this transformation in 30 minutes. Yes, uh, that's right. <laughs> there's uh, the three, I mean, the three steps that we talked through, obviously, the, you know, ensuring the mind shift and really starting with mapping and institutionalizing the customer journey and then just nailing that tactical shift. You have to put a plan in place to start shifting your tactics immediately. Um, and then collaborating on the MarTech shift with, with different functions to make sure that everybody's needs are being met in order to acquire and retain your existing customers. So three easy steps. How long does it take, Kobe? <laughs> It'll take about a year. <laughs> at least a year. Um, so we're at our Q&A time. We also invite everyone to download our white paper. And so uh, this is Ask Debbie and Colby time. So Majda, what kinds of questions do we have? Yeah, uh, our first question comes from Jeffrey. And the question is, uh, what is repurchase point? You want to talk about that one, Colby? Yeah, the repurchase point would be uh, like if you're under uh, contract with your customers, if they have, uh, you know, year long contracts or six month contracts, there would be a repurchase point that that, you know, is your sweet spot for renewal. So that would be if it's, you know, nine months into a 12 month contract, you want to start communicating with them in regular intervals at that nine month marker. So it, it's an, an expiry point when you want to start communicating again because you're reaching a point that their contract will, will terminate. Okay, Majda, next question. We've got a logistics question, which is, will this deck be available to download? And happy to say yes, everyone who registered and attended will receive a, the recording. They'll also receive the slide deck, as well as a direct link to this white paper for download. As well as a blog that we're writing based on this webinar and the poll results that you provided. Absolutely. Next question. Oh, this is a good one. This is, uh, what if your executive team has not yet bought into the value of customer centricity? <laughs> okay, Kobe, I'll take that one first. We, we, we laugh at this one. Um, I suggest you go find a new company to work for. Um, no, really, th this is a very serious issue and we see it in companies. Um, I was working with a company a few years ago and the VP of marketing operations and the CMO was so frustrated. They were just banging their head up against the wall because they saw the value in transforming into a customer centric organization. But the CEO and the executive team were just product straight up one side and down the other. Now, what happened in this particular company, a new CEO came in, and once that new CEO came in, this CEO really understood the value of it, and they were able to make that transformation. It's challenging, and it's difficult when your executives don't see the value of this. Colby? Yeah, I, I spotted a question in here that I absolutely love. It's, what are the human challenges of making this shift, and what do you recommend to address these? This is like my favorite topic in, in all transformation initiatives <laughs> or evolution initiatives. Um, you know, in any change, there's going to be resistance and people are going to say, I'm not doing that or I don't, I'm, they just will not get on board or they'll give you a thousand reasons why it's not going to happen or they're not going to do it. And it, the, the most critical factor in um, getting somebody on board or getting, uh, you know, allowing people to engage is education and really making them or helping them to understand why we need to make this shift and what the business value is and what the value is to them to making the shift. And once we are able to do that, 
it's much easier to include those people in the decisions that we're making around customer centric strategies. And once they're feeling inclusion, then it's like they're part of something bigger and then they feel like they're adding value to the business. So Kobe, that, that needs to be another webinar on change management because it is a great question and one that is central to everything that we do in marketing. Well, everyone, our time is up. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. I hope that you've learned something and that you can now go forward and begin to quantify your customer journeys. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you.